Okay, let's now go ahead and display the validation messages and then we will finalize this whole flow that is the record creation flow in this video. So yeah, let's go ahead and open up our code editor and to display the validation messages, uh, what we will be doing is we will be taking some inspirations from the existing implementation of the Laravel Breeze package. And if we go ahead and look into this update password form, then as you can see, we have this text input defined in here. And along with that, this input error is being passed to it. And this also expects a message prop. And in that message, this is passing the errors for the current password. So yeah, we can use this to display the validation messages. So yeah, what I will do is I'll just go ahead and copy this and paste that over in our index.view to display the validation messages because yeah, we can basically reuse that. And okay, we should be actually implementing this on our create.view. And here we have the name. So instead of this paragraph, I'll just paste that code that I just copied and let's go ahead and import this from the components namespace and for the message this is gonna be form dot errors dot name and let's go ahead and do the same for the email field so here we can paste that and the property in this case is gonna be email so let's pass that and let's do the same for our class so in this case, the property is going to be class ID. And let's do the same for our select as well. So let's paste that over here. And this is going to be section ID. And there are a few things remaining. That is the class binding. So here we need to bind these error classes accordingly. And let's just go ahead and look into the current implementation. So we have the text input. And okay, this is not implementing that i think and if we go ahead and look into the underlying class okay this is not implementing the conditional classes when the validation error happens so yeah we can implement that ourselves over here okay we should open create.view and here we have the error and these are the classes that we want to pass if we have an error for our name so yeah let's go ahead and start working on this so we can pass in additional classes to this by calling the class colon and inside an object we can pass the classes that we want to apply if you have errors related to the form dot errors dot name so for this specific key if there's an error in our validation object then we can just go ahead and apply these classes so i'll just cut these from here and paste that over here and we can basically use github copilot to implement the same for other fields as well so let's get rid of these and pass the conditional class binding and okay that looks good and let's do the same for the class id as well so i'll just remove this block of code and pass the conditional class binding for this class id as well and let's finally implement the same for our section as well so let's get rid of this and let's pass that over here okay and yeah that looks good let's now go ahead and give this a try so i'll try to make a validation error and okay we haven't implemented this on our backend so yeah let's go ahead and do that as well so on our student controller let's define a method called store and we'll be implementing the validations as well otherwise this won't be triggered if we don't implement it on our backend and the name of the request is going to be store student request let's pass that and let's go ahead and define this using our command so artisan make request store student request let's hit enter and let's open that up and for the authorization check uh, we will only let authenticated users to create a new student so let's go ahead and pass that check and we can do that by calling auth check and for the rules let's go ahead and pass the rules for name email class id and section id 
and here let's also pass section id which is going to be required and exist in our sections table so yeah this looks good let's now go ahead and implement this whole flow let's import the student request and we can just create that by using the student create and pass the request validated because we have performed the validations at this point and we can now redirect to the index page so yeah uh, we won't be passing any flash messages in here because that would be kind of a repetitive process and we have implemented this already in our first section so yeah, i'll be skipping that and you can go ahead and implement this if you want to practice your skills so yeah this flow is implemented let's now go ahead and hook this up in our front end so whenever we submit our form we need to make that request and we have that form over here so let's go ahead and pass that at the rate submit and we also want to prevent the default behavior so we can pass that dot prevent modifier and let's go ahead and call the create student method and let's define that over here const create student is going to be a function and here we will use the form and make a post request to the student's route and instead of passing this static string let's go ahead and pass the ziggy route and this is going to be students dot store and along with that we will also pass the data that our form holds and on success we don't have to do anything because we will be redirected to the index page so yeah, we can basically get rid of this and we are good to go okay maybe i need to remove this properly so i'll get rid of everything and yeah we'll just make a post request to the students dot store and if you have any validation errors then that will be reflected accordingly in our forms and if the request is successful then we will be redirected to the index page so yeah let's go ahead and give this a try let's try to make validation errors i'll just click on save then as you can see we have validations working now so we have the name field the email field is required and the class id and section id is required but this is kind of not so readable so instead of that we can override this by passing the attributes method in our request so let's go ahead and do that so public function attributes and we just want to override the attributes for the class id and section id and yeah we could also do the same for the name and email this is also more readable so yeah, i'll just keep it like this and for the class id and section id we want to pass the names as class and section which is more readable so yeah let's go ahead and give this a try again i'll click on save and now the changes are reflected accordingly in here and yeah let's now go ahead and try to create a new record so i'll pass some name let's pass an email address of some mail at the rate gmail.com and again if you have other validations that you want to perform like in this case you could pass the unique validation check or any other validation that you want to perform that's all up to you and this is again laravel related stuff so yeah this depends on the requirement and for now i think this makes sense so yeah let's go ahead and try to create a new student i'll just choose class one and section a let's go ahead and click on save and we are redirected to the index page and as you can see we have 11 pages in here so that means the record was created and if we navigate to the 11th page then here yeah, the record that we just created is stored in here with the appropriate class and section data so yeah this is working and there's one more thing that i want to fix in here that is if we check our create page then as you can see uh, we have this layout that we are extending on our create page but on our index page as you can see we don't have that and the design is a bit off so yeah let's go ahead and fix this in this video itself and we just need to extend the app layout that we are doing in our create page as well so i'll just go ahead and copy this block of code and on our template let's go ahead and paste that 
and we can end our template with the authenticated layout and we also need to import that from the appropriate namespace so we need the authenticated layout and the head so i'll just pass that manually in here let's paste that and we need to import the head component from view 3 and for the title this is going to be students list let's save that and if we go ahead and reload okay we also need to update this so this is going to be students list let's save that and yeah this looks good so yeah that's it for this video and in the next part we will be looking at editing these records so yeah i'll see you guys in the next one